Oh, I send greetings to you from Singapore. I believe there are some Singaporeans here too. Can I see your hand? Wonderful. Praise God. You know, I always look at Malaysia. It's very much a uh, family. Uh, I suppose we have relatives here and many of you are the like, same for us. So why don't we commit this time to the Lord? God, we thank you for the joy and the honor to be able to come into your presence. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful, wonderful time of worship. And no amount of words, Lord, that can describe, Lord, how we feel. And we thank you, God, that you touch us, Lord, many times, even when we are far away from you. But tonight, this afternoon, I pray, God, that you come and minister to our hearts, Lord, and just cause our hearts to be quickened and tune our ears to what the Holy Spirit wants to say, Lord. We thank you. We commit ourselves to you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, my title for uh, this afternoon's sermon is Dare to Sacrifice. Well, I believe some of you would feel, uh, you know, wow, we are talking about sacrifice. You know, it's something that is uh, uncomfortable uh, for many people. But maybe just, you know, for interaction, is that okay? Uh, Since we are quite a warm and close group here. um, Maybe you just uh, speak out loud. If I say the word sacrifice, what are the things you are willing to sacrifice for? Can I hear from you? What is that? Time. Sacrifice time for? For? Shopping. They are here shopping. Serving. (laughs) Must (laughs) speak properly. My wife says I'm going down the hill in my hearing. (laughs) Uh, What else? What other things you are willing to sacrifice for? That's great. Serving. Time for serving. Finance. They are here finance. Sacrifice finance. For, for the for mission trips. Okay, wow. All right. How about this side? When you hear the word sacrifice, what are the things you are willing to sacrifice for? Come on. A bit shy here. What about this center out here? Can't think of any. You know, sacrifice is a word that we, we don't quite like. But I remember, you know, a lot of us as we grow in age, we are willing to sacrifice for our family, sacrifice for our children, some will sacrifice for their career, and some even sacrifice for ministry. But let's just examine as we are in this series, I believe uh, uh, Church of Praise is going through the series through the book of John, and I trust that you don't miss them. Um, I do uh, visit the website of Church of Praise in case you are not aware. I love to come in and sometimes just listen to other pastors, including Pastor Mike, and get motivated, get inspired, you know, in the Word of God. And as we go into this book of John today, I want to take you to John chapter 12. But before that, now, how many of you have watched the movie Back to, Back to the Future? How many of you have heard this movie? Okay, that, that, that shows how old you are. Okay, it's quite an old movie. <laughs> Those of you, you have not heard of that movie before. Well, it's quite a, you know, it's an interesting movie. There are three parts to it. I remember in the first part, there was this uh, main actor, uh, acted by Michael J. Fox, by the name of Marty. Marty was, you know, uh, you know, kind of accidentally transported back uh, by Dr. Brown, you know, to the past. And he realized that he found his mom and his dad. And, you know, there was this big bad guy during that time by the name of Beef. And Beef is always going after uh, Marty's mother. And in order to make sure that he will be born, he must help the mom and the dad, you know, kind of get together and get married. And that was part one. And then come part two was very interesting. Once again, with the help of Dr. Brown together, they went back to their past, you know, to do some work. And by the time they came back to their their time in the 1980s, 1985 to be exact, he realized that the whole world has changed. What happened was, Beef was an old man by then. But by the time when they came back again, you know, Beef was like, he, he runs the biggest casino. He's one of the richest men in the world. And, you know, the, everything has changed. And uh, his dad died a few years ago. And his mom has been married to Beef. And to their horror, they realized what happened was Beef, at one point of time, took hold of this sports journal. And the sports journal itself recorded all the games, you know, in, in the past. And, 
And you know, you know what he did was he managed to travel back to the past and the old beef meets the young beef. Not B-E-F, uh, B-I-F-F. That makes you hungry. Can, can you imagine that? And so with that book, this old beef went to meet himself. But himself was a very young man at that time. And he passed that book to him and said, you better pay attention to this book. Everything you need to make money is in this book. Bet your life on it. And indeed, young beef took that book and he bet his life on it. And you know, every game he bet, he wins. Every investment he puts in, he wins. You know? and, and because of that, he became a rich man. Now, let me ask you this question. If I have a book that I'm going to give it to you, that is going to tell you what is going to happen in the future. Maybe it's, a, you, know, I, you know, some of you in stocks and share, I'm not uh, quite in stocks and share. I, I do play stocks and share. I tell people, you know, I stock things and I share with people. So, <laughs> uh, you know, but let's just say I give you this book and I tell you, look, this is the book that tells you what are the stocks that is going up in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Or maybe some of you are in, in, you know, into investment and this book itself records what are the investments that makes lots of money or, or perhaps you know, what are the property you're going to buy is going to double or triple in, in that part of investment. Wouldn't you take whatever you have and you're going to sacrifice to invest in those things? Don't you think so? I mean, that's what we probably would do, right? And, uh, you know, today I have good news for you. We do have that book. I believe you know what book is that, right? What book is that? Bible! We have the Bible. And it is sad. I mean, the world is becoming a lot, a lot more challenging for us as followers of Christ. And you hear all the persecution. In fact, even right now, there was a prayer that was being issued, urging Christians to pray for a North Korean pastor who has been just arrested. We are not sure whether he's still alive. We are praying for him and asking God to be merciful. You heard about the Paris, Paris uh, bombing and uh, shooting. At least 120 people died. Uh, just, you know, I was just reading news this morning. And you know, horrific things are happening. And yet today, I'm coming to you to issue you a challenge. Dare to sacrifice. I think it's time for the body of Jesus Christ to rise up and look beyond just our puny little ambition. Now, I'm not saying that those things are not important, but church, it's time for us to recognize that we are indeed in the last day. Would you agree with me we're in the last day? If you look at the signs and you look at the things that are happen, happening around us, you know that we are you know, living in the last day. But sometimes we think of a sacrifice as like, you know, giving up things and, and, you know, it's painful. While it can be painful, you must understand, we are surrendering something that is valuable for something that is priceless. That's why it's worth it. That's why when we read the Bible, you hear many preachers say this, that if you go to the book of Revelation, we win. But then there is a catch there. The overcomers win. So let us all be overcomer. Malaysia is getting very challenging. It's true. I read news about Malaysia. You know, uh, we, we have friends and relatives in Malaysia. And it is challenging. Uh, but yet, it is the most exciting time for us. If you are followers of Jesus Christ, you know that this is the most exciting time for every one of us. What are you willing to sacrifice today? You know, the catch is this. Why people dare to sacrifice? Because you believe. Do you believe in the Bible? Do you believe in the Word of God? Will it take some time to ponder in your hearts, do I believe in God? Do I believe in God? There was a pastor uh, just yesterday when he returned home and discovered his wife was pregnant. It was just short dead, short dead, you know, and left him behind and he's grieving and, and at this moment, you know, in the United States. Things like this are happening. Friend, are we going to bow down? Or are we going to say, God, I will still sacrifice. Why? Because I can give up my valuable, but yet I will exchange for the priceless. Will you hear amen from you? The key about sacrifice is this. What you believe will be the very thing you're willing to sacrifice. 
And what you sacrifice for will determine who you are. And this is what God is looking at. You know, many of you have sacrificed in this church. I know Pastor Mike for about 14 years right now. He has sacrificed. Believe me. I spoke to him in the earlier days. You know, got to know him for more than 10 years now. Many times, many times, you know, he has offered his life, his wife and his children, you know, together, serve, uh, you know, through all the difficult times. But the best part is this. God remembers God remembers. You know, many of you, if you have been through church long enough, you, you be, I believe you have been hurt before if you serve in church long enough. Will you tell yourself, congratulations? If you have never been hurt before in church, look, you don't understand what is the real world out there. I'm not saying that you come to church to get hurt, but you see, we will rub shoulder, whether you like it or not. But when we rub shoulder, when we choose to say, I sacrifice my own ambition, my pride, my everything, and I choose to love, I choose to forgive, you understand what Christ has done for you. And then you will rise up to the next level. And whatever we do in Colossians 3.23, we do it for the Lord. And God will remember. This is where I want to take you to two characters in the book of John. But before that, there are other chapters that describe these two characters that is going to show us what true sacrifice is all about. Are you ready for that? Can I hear amen if you are ready? The two characters I want to introduce you is Mary and Martha. Many of you will be familiar with these two women. Mary and Martha. The very first instant that uh, was recorded in the Bible was in the book of Luke, chapter 10. And if you remember, Martha was so busy, you know, preparing food and, and serving Jesus and the rest of the people. And uh, Mary was just in Malay word is tuang. Right? Tuang, eh? The cover. Is that what you say? It's like, you know, she was just idling in a sense, you know, she was seated at the feet of Jesus, listening intently to, to Jesus. And Martha herself was running up and down, serving and preparing food and all this. And Martha complained to Jesus, Jesus, ask Mary to help me. And we remember in that particular part in Luke 10, Jesus said, Martha, Martha, you are busy with many things, but Mary has chosen the good thing. And there was one part about Mary and Martha. Then come another part in John chapter 11. By then, their brother by the name of uh, Lazarus has died. Remember, Jesus is like, he knew in his mind, you know, in his, you, know, you know, he's a born son of God. And he knew that Lazarus is going to die. And he intentionally delayed going back, uh, you know, to, to Jerusalem and just let, let him die because he know that God the Father will be glorified in that situation. And so, you know, he, he kind of delayed. By the time he went back, Lazarus died. And the first person, guess what, came out to meet Jesus is again Martha. And Martha came to Jesus. Jesus, if only you come back earlier, Lazarus would not have died. And, you know, you know Jesus just told her plainly, don't worry, you know, things are going to be alright. You know, God is going to be glorified through it. And then, now came Mary. Mary came to Jesus and she said, Jesus, Jesus, if only you came early, Lazarus would not have died. Eh? They are saying the same thing. Amazing, right? But in this instant, Jesus wept. So you wonder, what's the difference? What's the difference? Now, if you have your Bible, this is where I want you to turn to John chapter 12. I know you have covered from John 1 to John 11. This is where I want to take you to John chapter 12, where through the life of Mary, you'll begin to understand what it means to sacrifice, what it means to give to God, what is really precious to Him. And in John 12, the famous story of Mary taking the expensive perfume, pouring on Jesus' feet and wiping His feet with her hair. You remember that story? For some of you are uh, familiar with this part of it. John 12, verse 1 and 2. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So in chapter 11, Lazarus died and Jesus raised him from the dead. And now in chapter 12, Jesus is coming back to Bethany. And here there was a dinner prepared, given in Jesus' 
honor. So they are like, well, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, you raised my brother, you know, from the dead. And now we're going to honor you. We are preparing this dinner just to honor you. And then it attracted a lot of people. A lot of people heard, hey, Jesus is coming. That was the guy who raised Lazarus from the dead. And all kinds of pe people uh, came, you know, curious people, seekers, uh, you know, some are skeptics, some are indifferent and all this. Isn't it sound like church? Right? And so all are welcome. All are welcome. If you come here, you felt a bit skeptical about things. You come here a bit indifferent about things. You come here, you know, you are curious about things. We say you are welcome. But most important thing, learn to be like Mary. Because when you do what Mary uh, did, you know, and you know, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be receiving the truth and the truth will set you free. You know, three things like us to dare to sacrifice. First, sacrifice our time to seek God. I'm talking about His Word. Spend time reading His Word. Spend time in prayer. That's the first thing I want to encourage us to do. Sacrifice our time to seek God. Second, sacrifice our finances for the kingdom of God. And third, sacrifice ourselves for the gospel. You know, the thing about sacrifice you know, time, finances, and even ourselves sometimes bring concerns. I remember once I was telling a church brother, in, you know, uh, about how much I sacrificed as a father and how much my wife sacrificed, you know, you say, and I boast about it, you know, I was just kind of having some fun with this brother. I say, you know what, at home, my wife is a washing machine because she washed all the clothes. And say, oh, okay, that's nice. And I am the vacuum cleaner. Because I do the vacuum, you know, you know, the house, I vacuum the house. And so this brother in Christ looked at me in a very innocent way. So your wife cleans. Mm -hmm. You sucks. I say, mm -hmm. hey, no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it didn't occur to me when he said you sucks. You know, it's like, oh, okay. And we sacrifice. And sometimes we look at all the smaller things we sacrifice. We think we are great. But hey, look, let's go to the real thing. First thing first. Sacrifice our time to seek God. You know, in John 12, the second part, again, Martha served. While Lazarus was among those reclining at the table within, already in Luke 10. Now, you see, you must understand this. There's nothing wrong for Martha to serve. There's nothing wrong for Martha to spend time preparing the food and all these things. But there must be a very distinct difference when we choose between spending time with God and being busy with all the things. I would rather none of us serve in the church if we were to spend hours seeking God. I'm not there for asking us to be monk or nun, but I'm saying that this part of it is so crucial and has been compromised because we are all Russians. Yeah, people ask me, where are you from? Singapore. So you're Singaporean? I said, no, I'm Russian. No, you're Singaporean? I said, no, I'm Russian. Why? Because I'm, I rush every day. I rush here, I rush there. So I'm a Russian. <laughs> so let us not be Russian anymore. And it's time for us, you know, to purpose in our heart to seek God. You see, Mary chose the better part of it. She would rather sit at the feet of Jesus, listening intently to what He's saying. She would rather take the time, instead of busy herself preparing this and doing that, she would rather sit at the feet of Jesus, wiping His feet with the most precious perfume and with her hair. Any of you have done that before, using your hair to clean things? I bet none of you. <laughs> I mean, sometimes we read the Bible, it's like, yeah, sure, it's not, yeah, it's like this, nothing wrong with it. You know, maybe we can have a demonstration, ask Ben to use his hair to come and clean my feet. I went to India before for mission trip. You know, some of you talk about mission trip. I remember the first few days, you know how I walk in India? You know why? How many of you can guess why? Yeah, <laughs> there are a lot of dunks on the floor. Oh my goodness, I was like trying to, you know, avoid them. You know, by the time I, I remember our third day or fourth day, I pra, 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 pra. then I smell like one of them after that. 
<laughs> it was that kind of environment, I hope you are aware, that Jesus was in. Dust, dirt, they don't wear shoes like us or wear socks. So their feet is dirty. And so when we talk about you know, washing each other's feet, it stinks, my friend. It's dirty. I bet, I'm sure they have washed their feet. But still, I did wash my feet before I come. Any of you volunteer to come use your hair to clean? And, uh, I know some of you can't because not much. <laughs> Mary took time. Friend, would you take time? Would you say, you know, God, this time is so precious. This time is so important. I, I just need to hear your voice. You know why this is so important right now? Don't you think that the world is very confusing right now? I mean, we hear news about uh, all the different movements, uh, you know, gay and lesbian movement. We hear, you know, ab about, you know, all kinds of teachings and prosperity gospel, the cheap grace gospel and, and things like that. And after a while, all these teachings start infiltrating, you know, the churches of Jesus Christ and you get very confused. You know, how are you going to counteract it? You know, of course, number one, you need to be plugged into a church that is sound. Number two, you need to tune your ears to God, my friend. It's time for us to seek the Lord and hear what God has to say instead of even, even people like us, what we stand here and speak to you. Friend, be like the Bereans. The Bereans check the Word of God. They check the Word of God. And who was preaching at that time? The Apostle Paul, my friend. I mean, he's like, whoa, he wrote so many letters in the New Testament. And yet the Bereans check the scripture against what Paul preached. It's time for us to take the time to read this word, to hear his still, small voice. And you're not going to get it if you are Russians, my friend. I remember when I was in the army, I was a tanky, if you understand. You know, we are cross-trained. We can be commander. We, we, we can be a driver. We can be, you know, a gunner. You know, the tank, the big, boom, the big tank. You know. And the other day, you know, I, I was, you know, rotated and I volunteered to be a driver, I remember. A smart aleck, you know, because I love to drive the tank. It's pretty cool. You know, it's quite nice. And while I was going up the slope, you must know that tank is older than my grandfather. I'm not, I'm not kidding you. The tank is older than my grandfather. And when I was going up the slope, you know, I mean, it, it, it failed. So in a tank, just for your information, there are uh, one brake, like the car, and then there is this steering wheel that we use it to turn left or turn right, a very instantly, bzzz, bzzz, you know. If you all play computer game, you understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> And while I was going up slope, okay, why do I talk about the steering? Because if I jam the two steering, it stopped the tank, not only the brake itself. So when I was going up slope, the engine died. And it started rolling back. Now when it started rolling back, natural instinct, what do you do? Jam the brake. <laughs> yes, I jammed the brake. And guess what happened? I wish something happened. But nothing happens. <laughs> and the tank starts rolling back. And I begin to panic. And next moment, because I jammed the brake so hard, white smoke become, it start coming out. And I start choking. You must understand, we can close our hatch. You understand, right? In the tank, we can close our hatch. And my hatch was closed at that time. I panic. And the smoke start coming out. I was choking. I can't see a thing because my compartment is completely white out with smoke. And I was choking, I was coughing, and next thing I, what I tried to do, pull the two, you know, uh, stirring, you know, the two, two brakes itself. And I pull the two thing. Guess what happened? Nothing happened. <laughs> it kept rolling back and rolling back and rolling back. And I told the commander, it's not stopping. That's all I told him. And the commander was silence. I can't do anything. I'm still holding on to it, but it kind of make it worse because when I jam the brake, now I pull the two steering, the white smoke gets even more intense. 
and I was choking, I was coughing and all this. And all I remember I did was I say I need to listen. And out of the blue, the commander said, really stirring, hard right. And what it means, hard right, is you just pull it, just jerk it, you know. And I did that, and the tank jerked. And next moment, I heard a loud bang, boom! And after that, you know, I almost fainted because by the time I was so choked with smoke. And the commander came, opened the com- uh, compartment together with the uh, uh, gunner, and they pulled me out and all this. And after I got my, catch my breath and all this, I will r- never forget, we, three of us, we stand at the edge of the cliff. Imagine this, the tank. We're standing at the edge of the cliff. It's like this is the edge. And this was the tank. Just a little bit, this whole tank goes down. And I won't be here. <laughs> Just one very firm. And he didn't shout. He said, oh, her left, her left. No, he was very cool. I mean, he is really cool, you know. He just said, all right, that's all. And what I realized was when he did that, because he saw a huge, huge, what I call that, rock or what, I don't know what that, and he intentionally get my tank crashed into that rock to break, you know, the reversing. And we saved the day. He really saved the day. And three of us was alive because of that. Just one very soft voice. Hard right. Friend, this is what we need. Sometimes when the smoke of your life and the surroundings starts to choke you, it's so important that we all tune in and listen to the voice of God. Friend, it's time for us to dare to sacrifice time. Don't let anything take away the time between you and the Lord. You see, sacrifice is never convenient. There are convenience stores in, in Malaysia, I know. But sacrifice time is never convenient. It is intentional. So let us say from to, this afternoon, let's dare to sacrifice and say, well, I'm not going to compromise in this, no matter where I am, no matter what. And you know what? It, it's not about, you know, I spend one hour, I spend five hours, I spend 20 minutes. And it's not. It is that very, very close moment that you, you interact with the Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Will you, to, to this afternoon, purpose in your heart and say, God, I will sacrifice my time every day to seek your face, to read your word, and to tune in to hear your voice. That's the first thing I want to encourage you to do. And let's continue in John 12, verse 3. Then Mary took about half a liter of pure nut, an expensive perfume, she poured on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with fragrance of perfume. The second thing I want you to sacrifice is our finances for the kingdom of God. First thing, let's sacrifice our time to seek God. Second thing I want to encourage us to do is to sacrifice our finances for the kingdom of God. You know, when we sacrifice, when we offer our offerings, it becomes a perfume the fragrance permeates the whole place. You know, some of us get pressured. You know, it's like, oh, you know, we're going to talk about money again. You know, I'm going to be stressed. It is Second Corinthians and nine seven. It says, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give. It is not how much I'm going to tell you, how much Church of Praise is going to tell you. It's how much you have purposed in your heart to give. And from there, not reluctantly, after you have purposed it, because you're not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Friend, that's the principle. Whatever amount you have purposed in your heart, give and give joyfully. And you know, it's like there are people who ask me, Pastor, there are two teachings here. 10% tithes and offering. Very common, right? right? Every church, we do 10%, you know, and it was taken from the Old Testament. But yet, there's another teaching that says there's no such thing about 10%. If you look at, you know, some of the scriptures, there's no such thing. And you know what I want to tell you? It's whether 10%, 5%, 100%. 100%. Look, it is what you have purpose in your heart. If you start to debate 
and starting point to talk about whether is it 10%, why 10% or this, that is a wrong starting point. Are you with me? That is the wrong place to begin with. The first place to begin with is why do I give? That's the first thing. You know, when I, when I give money to my children, have, have you, have you, can you imagine, come Ben, be my, my, be my son. You know, be my son. Uh, let's, let's just say, you know, I, I'm giving him like uh, 10 ringgit. Son, call father first. Uh, <laughs> not bad I got such an old son. <laughs> can this be real? <laughs> $10. Yeah. Make sure you behave yourself, okay? okay? Yeah, make sure you don't anyhow spend. Yeah, you must give an account of what you're going to spend. Okay, yeah? And also, uh, I, I want a write out, a spreadsheet, you know, of what you're going to spend with this 10 ringgit. Oh, by the way, you know, I know you're courting people, huh? uh, so cannot spend on girl. Huh? huh? And also, uh, this $10 is very hard earned, you know, by the way. I spent a lot of sweat and tears to earn this $10. So, uh, make sure you be a good steward, okay? You still want it? Really? <laughs> Thanks, Ben. You know, sometimes we give to God like this. We, we kind of like, we hold back, we struggle and all this. You know, have you ever give to God that is so painful? Have you done that before? Have you done that before? You give to God and it's like, oh, ouch, painful. But yet, uh, shook, man. <laughs> Friend, try it. Try it. I thank God for my wife all these years in ministry. I've been in ministry about 22 years now. And by God's grace, by His mercy, honor and privilege, we are able to give. Friend, you must understand, you know, I'm, I, I've been to many places in mission, on mission trips. And have it occurred to you that how privileged you are to be on the position of giving? Have you think about it? Have you considered you are on the other end receiving. Have you been to places, maybe an orphanage, where you go and you talk to this young girl, and this young girl says, oh, I'm here. Uh, she was giving a testimony. I'm here in this orphanage because one day when I was coming back from school and when I walked into my room, I saw my mom hang herself. And my father just died because he has HIV. But today, I want to praise God. I want to give thanks to God. Friend, I, when I look at her and I look at her brother who is younger than her, I say, I could be one of this boy. I could be one of him. And for such a time like this, you and I are born here, whether in Singapore or in Malaysia, friend. Have you considered how privileged, how honored we are to be here? And therefore, when we are able to give, friend, it is a privilege. It is an honor that God has bestowed upon us for us to give. In John 12, 4 to 6, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It's worth a year's wages. You know, um, what is the average uh, income in Malaysia right now? 2,000? Ringgit? About? Uh, I'm not sure. And somebody, I'm, I'm just trying to go to the lowest, lowest, uh, you know, uh, part of it. In Singapore, probably about 1,000 maybe. But let's just say 2,000 ringgit. It's 24 ringgit a year, 24,000. And you just imagine, you know, ladies, I think that is something that probably dearer to your heart. Uh, you know, most ladies will put on perfume, you know, like, imagine your perfume is 24,000 ringgit. And you're going to pour it out. Wow, I mean, you know, it's like $24,000 worth of perfume. I can use it like maybe 24 years, maybe. 
that's expensive, right? That's a lot, a lot of money. And Judas Iscariot was upset, you know. He said, why wasn't this perfume sold and the money be given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. Now, this is where he says he did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And what he's trying to say here is as a keeper of money back, he wants to help himself with the money. And if that is being sold and be given to the poor, that means he's given the, the opportunity to handle the money. And he, when he's given the opportunity to handle the money, friend, he has the opportunity to take the money for himself. Now, this is where I need to ask to recognize this. When a person starts giving grudgingly, they turn the fragrance to order, stinky order, like Judas is carried. But those of you who have gave and gave and gave, friend, God remembers. Your life becomes a fragrance. I know there are times you'll be discouraged. There are times you, you wonder, you know, about things, about ministry, and maybe some of us also get this illusion about church, you know. Is it okay to get this illusion about church? You have never? I'm surprised. I do. <laughs> I do. Hey, look, you know, let's be open. Let's be honest. There are times we do get lost in the wilderness of churches. But it's so important for us to get our bearing in Christ so that we will not get lost. And when we begin to get our orientation with the bearing of Jesus Christ, you know what? God will always direct us back to love, forgiveness, forbearance, prefer one another above ourselves. And then what happens when you choose to obey the Lord? You become a fragrance. You become sweet aroma. How do people see you this day? How do people see you? When they come near you, when they smell you, or they stay away. <laughs> it's time for us to smell sweet. Guys, it's okay. Let's smell sweet for Jesus. Amen? And we want to be so sweet that people say, you know, I'm a bit stink. I'm stink from the world. Can I come near you to get some perfume from you? Why not? Come nearer. Come nearer. You know, with the same fragrance of Jesus, you can be sweet smelling too. Isn't that beautiful? Now, has it occurred to you that, you know, Jesus all-knowing, right? Jesus is all-knowing. And when Judas said that, do you think Jesus knows what Judas is thinking? Obviously, Jesus knew his heart. Jesus knew that he was a thief. He wants the money. He, he doesn't care about the poor. Jesus knew that. Then why did Jesus not rebuke Judas? Why, why did Jesus not say, Judas, I know you don't even care about the, the, the poor. You, you know, you, you only care because you want to take the money for yourself. Why didn't Jesus rebuke Judas? Friend, I tell you why. Because Jesus' eyes is on you, those of you who dare to sacrifice your finances for God. Those of you who permeate the fragrance of our Lord Jesus, He takes notice of you. Maybe some of you, you know, you sacrifice not just finances, your time, your energy, and you give up yourself to help other people in this church or in the community. Some of you, you sacrifice, you take your savings, you take your, your income and you bless this body of Christ here. And sometimes you feel discouraged because maybe financially, you also are struck with difficulties. I don't know, maybe some of you, you know, you know, the world is getting so challenging. Uh, just within this week itself, I've already seen about four different uh, people uh, or get uh, in touch with four different people with different problems, you know, like a son who is depressed has stopped going to school for one over a year and, and mom is divorced and when in, a, in the period of divorce, she was so upset that she whipped her son and now she looks back, she's full of regrets and, and uh, the older boy, you know, is also suffering and was so quiet and, uh, you know, the, the husband is nowhere to be found by now, probably back into China or whatsoever and, uh, you know, another case, you know, the Ministry of Social and Family Services, you know, the, our govern, government agency was just heard this family back in because the son was abused uh, when he was young and was taken under care. And, you know, but, you know, there were so many of these things that is going on around us. Friend, we need you. We need you to bring your sweet fragrance out 
into the world. Why has this got to do with finances? Friend, let's be real. Without finances, we can't do much. Seriously. I've known Pastor Mike, you know, like I say, for 14 years. I honor this man. Why? In case you're not aware, in the earlier years, in the earlier days of Church of Praise, I slept in the hall before many times. I was involved in this Vietnamese ministry, and I, I think the Vietnamese ministry is still on. I slept in the hall, but now I think it's converted to overflow. I praise God for the growth. In the earlier days, this place here, every time when I come back, that's why I come back very regularly uh, because of the Vietnamese ministry. And every time when I come back, I see new phases. And the church doesn't seem to grow. But I keep seeing new phases. And so I ask him, Pastor Mike, tell me what, what's going on. You know, it's like a, a bittersweet kind of thing for us as pastors. We, we find it is an honor, but yet it's also a challenge. You see, what happened is in the earlier days, he would train up leaders, you know, you train up a group of leaders. And then after that, the leaders, some of them, you know, are in a school, in a tertiary and all this. And then when they graduate, guess what? They bless Singapore. You know, many of them go to Singapore. I'm, I'm not kidding you. They bless Singapore because a lot of these leaders who was trained by him will you know, go to Singapore and work and then they become the leaders of the churches in Singapore. And some of them, of course, they further their study. They, you know, they will go to uh, Australia or New Zealand and many of them will go back to uh, KL and, and stuff like this. And painlessly, tirelessly, he will labor on, labor on, raising new people. And I'm thankful for that. I get inspired because of him. And he has sacrificed. And I believe this is time. I want to challenge all of you. Talk is cheap. Agree? Where the treasure is, there your heart will be. And this is where let us dare. Let us dare to sacrifice by giving our finances for the kingdom of God. You know, I was excited. Please do go and see, you know, do check out uh, Church of Praise website. Go, go and see the amount of works that this church is doing. Friend, it's remarkable. They have single mom ministry. They have a counseling service in the shopping center of which I've been there before. Uh, and and they, they have so many exciting things. They, they raise funds for other uh, needs and stuff like that. Hey, look, you know, there's no other exciting church that I can think of. I'm, I'm sure there are many here in, in Malaysia, but, you know, this is one of them. And let's get real. I want to challenge you, first thing first, dare to sacrifice. And you must align yourself with God by seeking His face. Sacrifice your time. Second, dare to sacrifice your finances. And when you do that, hey, look, you know, God is going to show Himself faithful. My wife and myself have given a lot. But you know what? We have never gone hungry. I can testify to you. We have given a lot. In the 20 over years, and I need to testify, God has never failed me and my family. He's so faithful. Put God to the test. That's the thing we talk about. I remember once I took a team to, to Japan uh, to do some training. It's like a, a mission trip in Japan. And we took some time out to meet a pastor, a pastor friend of mine in Japan. And you, you must understand, in Japan itself, the population of Christians are down to the zero point something percent. And it's very, very tough at that time. And when he runs the church, he has to work to feed himself. And his wife just given birth, I remember. And so my wife and myself were there. We say, look, let's give. And so what we did is we went to the team member. We say, okay, 
ladies and gentlemen, we're going to leave Japan tomorrow. I'm sure you have, you know, uh, uh, yen left. Okay, I want all of you to give me all your yen, but record them down. All of you, all give me all your yen. And so they gave, 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 we recorded them. Okay, you give me how much. So uh, this is the first time I borrow money. Eh? It's okay, eh? I borrow money. <laughs> I said, lend it, lend it to me. When I go back to Singapore, I'll pay you back. You know? And so I took, we count, counted, we put all of them in an envelope, including our, ours. We put in an envelope. We met him for dinner. Uh, Pastor Hyobu, his name. We met him for dinner and after dinner and all this, you know, we chat, chatted and all this. And then we walked to the train, uh, you know, in, in, in Japan. And, and when he went in uh, to, the, to the train, I still remember I, we called him. We, we shouted, you remember, we called him, Yobu! And he turned around and we shoved the envelope into his hand and the train door closed. <laughs> I'm not sure now, I can't remember, is it? It's so painful, you know. Should I give, should I not give or one? <laughs> I, I don't think so. We, we knew that he's going to reject. We knew that he's going to say, no, I won't receive, I won't take it. That's the reason why we, we kind of plan it and, and we shove it in his hand and the train door closed and he was shocked and all this. It was quite a big sum of money. It's really quite a big sum of money. And the train went off. Ouch. Shook, man. <laughs> Next day, the church came and gave us a love gift because I was doing ministry there, praying for them, preaching and whatever. And the church uh, collected an offering. And I guess you can guess the story, right? The amount collected and given to us was the exact amount we gave to him. Isn't that amazing? God never fails. He reigns. That's why I got excited when you sing this song. He reigns. But you want to experience that? You must dare to sacrifice. And you know what? Like we sang just now, He has sacrificed all. What else He can't when He sees His sons, His daughter like you and I, willing to sacrifice for Him? The third thing. But before that, I know this church has a pledge uh, for the building program. I want to encourage some of you, if you're unaware of this, Maybe you want to take it home, think about it, and purpose in your heart, okay, there's this pledge for the building. This is what I want to, I want to pledge. You know, some of you, I understand, you probably have not pledged yet. Will you do that? Go back and say, God, I don't want to be hearers of the word. I want to be the doers of your word. Not because I need to test you whatsoever, but God, because I want to demonstrate my love to you. Will you do that? I'm not asking you to give me now uh, to, to collect offering now, but I'm asking you to, will you you know, support this pledge and say, okay, I'm going to pledge if you have not done so. And those of you, you have pledged. And those of you who have given, remember this, God remembers. God remembers. And when you give with joy, you give with that sacrificial love unto God, God remembers. So take heart and be encouraged. So first thing, sacrifice our time to seek God. Second, sacrifice our finances for the kingdom of God. Third, sacrifice ourselves for the gospel. Do you know there are many funny Bible right now out there? I mean, I'm not talking about our, our Bible. I'm talking about it's, it's heretical Bible. It, it is almost like they can tweet the word to suit what they want. And there are many versions of Bible they are already created in case you are not aware. And it's scary. And why do I say that? You know, it comes to a point of time, maybe, I believe, people will just get so tired of the, the Bible that they don't want to read anymore. But then, guess what? Who becomes the Bible? You and I. We become the, the walking Bible through our testimony, through our lifestyle, and people look at us and it's like, you are different. You are different. You know, in John 12, verse 9 and 10, meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus. You see, they're so curious whom he has raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. And so I want to talk about sacrifice ourselves. There was a large crowd that came. 
the testimony of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead became such a powerful testimony that attracted the large crowd. Isn't it exciting when, when people walk around and say, have you heard about Church of Praise in JB? I've asked people that in Singapore and they say yes. For those of you who are staff, for those of you who have served your guts out here in this church, give yourself a pat on the shoulder. Your, your testimony has gone out, my friend. Your testimony has gone out, in case you're not aware. I've heard people say, yeah, oh, the one at uh, Bukit Indah. Yes, I've heard people say that. And uh, maybe some of you, you are here because, you know, uh, you're from Singapore and you heard about this church. That's why you are here. And praise God for that. Friend, let us be the Bible. John 12, 11, or 40, on account of him, many of the Jews, account of Jesus, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. And sometimes, friend, true sacrifice of our lives for the gospel not necessary will make us popular. Try walking into, you know, a, a marketplace where people talk about clubbing, pubbing, you know, and whatever thing, you know, uh, that is very dark in a sense. And you say no. And they look at you, you're weird. I remember years ago, we started off with this idea of seeker sensitive service. Have you heard about this before? Seeker sensitive service. In case you have not, what this service is all about is, you know, there are seekers, there are people who are yet followers of Jesus Christ. So we want to make the service in a way not so... You know, Christian can be very goofy, you know. Christian can be very weird. Every other word, they will say hallelujah. And then when we pray, they repeat, you know, they're very weird, you know, they're very weird people. You know, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, Lord, I praise you, Lord, you know. He said, why are you so weird? Huh? I don't even talk to my friend like this, you know. Hey, hi, Ben. You know, Ben, uh, have you eaten Ben? Uh, ben, you know, are you uh, fine tonight, you know, this afternoon, you know, Ben? We don't repeat like that, but Christian does that, you know, very weird and, and, and things like this, you know. But, hey, <laughs> we want today, every one of us, not to be, you know, in a sense of their weirdness. We want to be true followers of Christ. And so with that sicker senses, sensitive service, they become like, hey, I think we are still very Christian. So what do we do? Scale it down. Maybe we should sing not so churchy song. Lah. Huh? Any, any song that is not so churchy that you know? If I ask one of my church lady, she will tell me, almost heaven, West Virginia. I say, wow, that one is like my father's era. <laughs> and so that's what they did. And they began to say that, okay, you know, in order to be uh, sensitive to the seekers, let's all, you know, like maybe uh, not so Christian. And so they begin to backslide, backslide, backslide. And you know, guess what happened? After a while, the, Christ the non-Christian look at us and they say, they look exactly like us. And why should I go to church? They look exactly like us. We put on tattoos, they put on tattoos. I put on earrings, they put on nose ring. I put on, you know, mangroves, they put on whatever, you know. And so they look exactly the same like us. So what's the big deal? I mean, why should I go to church? You know, my experience is this. I remember years ago when I was still an engineer, um, there was a whole group of uh, customers that came from Japan. And my boss, you know, very crude, during lunchtime, you know, he was introducing, uh, you know, all these customers that flown from Japan. I was represent, representing U.S. Electric Motors. And, you know, this, the Japanese came, hi, 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 you know, and the way they speak English, I don't know what they're talking. Uh, and so my boss looked at all of them, you know, and, and, and greeted them, and then after that introduced me to them. This is Tansan. Tansan. Hi, hi, Tansan. Uh, konnichiwa, you know, and then hi, uh, hi. And then he say, by the way, Tansan, uh, very holy. Uh, very holy. No dirty jokes, huh? No dirty jokes. He meant to ridicule me. Seriously. And at that moment, I knew his plot. 
you know, if you're not strong, if you are not willing to sacrifice yourself for the gospel, guess what you do? No, la, it's okay. La. I can handle some dirty jokes. La. No problem. La. It's all right. You know? Some of us will fall into that trap. But I remember this. I told myself, God, I will not compromise. And so I stare at my customer. You know, some of these things you must practice, you know. That's why I joined the drama ministry. It's very good. So I, ah. I look at one by one. No dirty jokes. No dirty jokes. No dirty jokes. Of course, I didn't tell them that, but my facial tell them he's right and I'm serious about it. I'm serious. So the lunch went on, you know, and finished and it went off and all this. We went back off, still waiting for, you know, whether they are going to take this project, which cost about half, uh, half a million of uh, US dollar at the time. And that's huge, huh? That's a huge amount, huh? And I will never forget my boss secretary. Hey, hi. The Japanese director is looking for you. The boss is around. Come to look for boss, look for me. No, but he insisted of talking to you. I said, okay, can, can. Okay, my only thing I, pay, I worry is I don't understand why he's talking. That's all. <laughs> so the phone was passed to me. And he said this, Tan san. He said, hi, 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 hi. Um, I like you. And I'm going to give the business to you. I tell you, I almost jump up the table, you know. I almost jump up. Wow! <laughs> that was the first uh, biggest project that I, you know, got. And I never forget that. Friend, when I share this, I'm not trying to say how good I am. I do fail at times. But these are reminders, you know, stepping stone, benchmark in my life that reminds me that when we dare to sacrifice ourselves for the gospel and the kingdom of God, God remembers and God will honor, my friend. And my boss was shocked. You have to understand there are many competitors out there and many of them are much cheaper. I'm not kidding you. You know, mine is about half a million. Just is like 400,000, 450,000. We know because, you know, sometimes we will be able to get some of those information. But when you choose to honor God and sacrifice, God remembers. God remembers. I remember this, this joke, you know, this mother decided to visit the, the son who is a pastor. Um, you know, just kind of check him out, you know, visit my son's church, you know, because she was from another church. So she decided to come and when she was walking in, the usher came to her and said, Ma'am, can I usher you to a seat? And so she said, I like to sit in front. Oh, Ma'am, you better don't sit in front. I tell you a secret. My pastor is very boring. You sit in front just in case uh, you fall asleep. Uh, so you better sit behind. Everybody sit behind, you know, just in case they fall asleep. Oh, indignant, you know, you are insulting my son. And so this, this elderly woman look at this usher and say, do you know who, who am I? And so, of course, the usher, can I know? I'm the mother of the pastor that you just spoke about. And the, the usher panicked. She thought of her a while. And she looked at her, ma'am, do you know who am I? And the mother looked at him. I don't know who you are. That's good. Let's keep it that way. <laughs> Friend, no undercover Christian is allowed. Okay, no undercover Christian is allowed. You and I will be single out. Believe me. It's either you are for God or you are for God. <laughs> But let us do that. Let us dare to rise up and to sacrifice for the gospel. Friend, the world desperately needs the word of life. And you could be the only Bible they ever read in their life. Are you willing to do that? As we look at Mary, as she pours out that perfume, it is more than just the expensive perfume. It is her life. And in her life, in that time she sat at the feet of Jesus, 
sacrificing everything else and she could be being accused by other people. It's like, you know, why are you doing this? You know, you should be spending time doing that. You've got this problem on hand. Shouldn't, shouldn't you go and solve that problem and, and do something about it? Why, why are you taking this time just to be quiet before the presence of the Lord? You know, why are you giving this finances? I mean, it's stupid. You know, you're, you're, you're having issue in your finances and you still gave to the Lord and, and people would just ridicule you and there, there may be people come to you and say, you know what, what kind of testimony what testimony? You look weird. You know, the world has moved on. You know, look at all of us hipster Christian, you know, and they walk like this, they talk like that, and you know, don't, don't you think you should be like us? You know, it's like everything is okay as long as you feel good. You know, there's this feel good gospel, you know, it's like, just feel good, you know, everything, because God is there for you, He's for you, He make you the head and not the tail, and everything is about you, you know, and, and we begin to sing the worship song, you know, it's not, it's all about you, Jesus, now we start to sing, it's all about me, Jesus, you know, everything is reversed, and, and but now it's time for the churches of Jesus Christ, those true followers of Jesus Christ, to say, God, I will sacrifice. I dare you, my friend. That's my challenge for you. I dare you sacrifice. Would you? If not for people who dare to sacrifice, we wouldn't be here, my friend. Go read the history of church. Go read the history of Malaysia. Go read the history of Singapore. Many men and women sacrificed, leaving their country to come to nations like ours. They gave and they gave. They built schools. They built hospitals. And now it's up to you and I to build the legacy now. It's up to you and I to say, it's our turn and I'm going to sacrifice. And the first thing, tune in to God. Second, you know, sacrifice our time God. Second is to sacrifice our finances for the kingdom of God and third, my life. Are you willing? Will you do that this evening? Let us pray.